And now we're going to take another look at the Wheatstone Bridge. In this case, what we're going to try and do, find the current across the load resistor, which is between A and B, that's the midpoint of the Wheatstone Bridge. So in the previous video, we put a small galvanometer there, a small current meter, to try and equalize the voltages between A and B by a, by a resistor here that we could adjust in such a way that the voltage drop from there to there was equal to the voltage drop from there to there, which caused no current to flow between A and B, which enabled us to find the unknown resistor over there, which was one of the functions of a Wheatstone bridge. But in this case, we're going to do something different. We have four known resistors, and therefore, if the voltage between A and B is not equal, there will be some sort of current on that resistor. We'll call that the load resistor, and we're trying to find out what that current is equal to. And how do we do that? What is the way in which we can figure out what that is? And you know what? We're going to use Thevenin's rule or Thevenin's theorem to solve that. So we're going to take advantage of something very unique, Thevenin's theorem, to figure out the current across that load resistor. Now, before we do that, uh, let's see here. Let's talk a little bit more about the Wheatstone bridge. Since there's a 100 volt battery attached to this, we know that this is at 100 volts, and this down here will be at zero volts. And now we want to find out what V sub B is and what V sub A is. So how do we figure that out? Well, it depends upon how much of the voltage drops across this resistor versus this resistor. Notice if this resistor is smaller than this resistor, less voltage will drop across this resistor compared to this resistor, and the voltage here at B will be greater than 50 volts. It'll, it'll be a smaller than 50 volt drop from there to there. Notice that there's a 100 ohm resistor here and an 80 ohm resistor. This resistor is bigger than this resistor. More than 50 volts will drop from there to there, which means this will be at a lower potential than there than this, and so current will go from B to A just like the arrow indicates. So that seems to make sense. But now let's find out what the voltage drop is across this branch right here. And so the let's call that the delta V across this branch. So delta V at B. What is that equal to? Delta V at B is equal to the voltage applied, which is 100 volts times the ratio of this resistor right here, which is R1, divided by the total sum of the resistors R1 and R2. R1 plus R2, and so in this case, that is equal to 100 volts times 90 divided by 90 plus 110, that would be 90 over 200, so this is equal to 100 volts times 90 over 200. That would be 45%, so this is equal to 45 volts. So since we have a 45-volt 45, 45 drop from there to there, start at 100 volts minus 45, so this has to be at 55 volts. All right, now going on to this side, we can do the same for delta V for A. That's equal to 100 volts times the ratio of this resistor, which is R3, divided by the total sum of the two resistors, which is R3 plus R4, which is 100 volts times the ratio, R3 is 100 ohms, divided by 100 plus, that would be 80, which is equal to 100 volts times 100 divided by 180. And let's see here, that's uh, 10, that would be uh, 5 over 9, and that doesn't come out quite evenly, so I'll need a calculator for that. So that would be 50 divided by 9 is 5 point, uh, that would be 55.5 volts. So 55.6 volts to round that off. Okay, so that is the voltage drop going from there to there. So the potential at A, V at A, is equal to 100 volts minus that, so that would be 44.4 volts. So 44, that's uh, 99. Yep, that works out. So that's the potential at A, the potential at B. So notice the potential at B is uh, about 10 volts greater than potential at A, so you have a current flowing this way. All right, so now what we need to do is make this circuit look like a, an equivalent Thevenin circuit. An equivalent Thevenin circuit is one with a single battery, and that has a potential V Thevenin with a single resistor, that would be R Thevenin. And so this whole bridge circuit, this whole thing, 
not including R sub L, will not be replaced by this equivalent series circuit. And then we simply attach the load resistor to it, R sub L, and then to find the current I that goes through R sub L, I is simply the voltage, V Tevenin, divided by the total current in the circuit, which is R Tevenin plus R of the load resistor, which in this case is a 2 ohm resistor. So now we have to take the whole bridge circuit and replace it by this equivalent Tevenin circuit. All right, so the first thing we do is we remove R sub L, and now we end up with this circuit right here. So when we remove R sub L, we still have these four resistors. So, so this is still the 100 ohm resistor, this is still the 90 ohm resistor, this here is the 80 ohm resistor, and this here is the 110 ohm resistor, and now since the load resistor is removed, we simply open it up like that, and so what we're trying to find now is we're trying to find the potential difference between A and B. That potential difference, so the difference between A and B, that will become the Thevenin voltage. And of course, since we already worked that out, so that voltage here would be at 55 volts, and this voltage right here would be at 44.4 volts. The difference between the two, so V between A and B, is equal to 55 volts minus 44.4 volts, which is equal to 10.6 volts, and that would now be known as the Thevenin voltage, which is this right here, so this is equal to uh, 10 0.6 volts. All right, now we need to find the equivalent Thevenin resistance. The way we do that is we short out the battery with a wire, and now we find the equivalent resistance between A and B with the load resistor removed. So now we have our second circuit that looks like this. Like that. So now the battery is gone, we just have a, a wire connected those, so this is 100 ohms, this here is 90 ohms, this one here is 80 ohms, and this one here is 110 ohms, and now we want to find the equivalent resistance between A and B. So R between A and B is equal to question mark. So now how do we look at the circuit? Well notice, to go from A to B, we can either go through this circuit, like that, or we can go through this circuit, like that, or we can come around this way, well that won't get us to B. Let's see here, does that have any effect? This circuit here looks a little confusing. I want to find the resistance between A and B, so the best thing to do here is simply to redraw the circuit, otherwise your brain is not going to be able to figure out what this looks like. So starting from A, I have this little circuit right here, now it splits up between two branches like this, and then in the one branch, I have a 100 ohm resistor. Oop, let's just go like that. So I have a 100 ohm resistor. In the other branch, I have an 80 ohm resistor. Now notice that these two points now, after the 100 and after the 80, they're connected with this wire right here. So in other words, they come back together, they're connected, and then we branch back out to these two resistors, so now we have another resistor here, which is a 90 ohm resistor. And another one right here, which is a 110 ohm resistor. These are ohm symbols, there we go. And then they come back together, and then they go to B. That's the equivalent resistance we're looking for that we need to put in right there. That's the Thevenin equivalent resistance. And so realize it's simply the sum of two branches, the sum of two parallel branches. So this is going to be the uh, product over the sum right here, so the product is 100, get rid of that question mark, times 80, so the product over the sum, 100 plus 80, that is the equivalent resistance of these two resistors, plus, because these are in series, plus the product over the sum, which is 90 over 110, divided by 90 plus 110. Okay, so this is the equivalent resistance of these two, this is the equivalent resistance of those two, we add them together, we get the total equivalent resistance, and so that would be um, 8,000 divided by 180 plus 
that would be, hmm, that would be uh, 9,900, 9,900 divided by 200. Let's see if I get that right. That's 9,000, that's 9, yeah, 9,900. All right, now we need a calculator. So we have 8,000 divided by 180 plus 9,900 divided by 200 equals and we get an equivalent resistance of 93.9 ohms. 93.9 ohms. All right, that's the equivalent resistance of the Thevenin equivalent circuit, which goes in here. That would be 93.9 ohms. And now all we have to do is plug that in here to find the current through our load resistor. So this is equal to the voltage, 10.6 volts, divided by the Thevenin resistance of 93.9 ohms plus the load resistance, which is 2 ohms. And so well, let's add that. So plus 2, take the inverse of that, and multiply that times 10.6 equals, and that looks like 0 0.11 amps. 0 0.11 amps. And that would be the current through the load resistor. Wow, this is actually pretty neat, because otherwise this would be a very difficult problem if we didn't do that way. We'd have to use Kirchhoff's rules. We'd probably end up with six equations and six unknowns. Don't want to go there. So what we did instead is we found the, the Thevenin equivalent circuit of our bridge circuit. So that would be something that looks like this with a voltage and a resistance. To find the voltage, we take the bridge circuit, remove the load resistor, and then we find the voltage from A to B. It's basically simply the 100 volts that we had right here. So we had a 100 volt battery. We're going to have a voltage drop on the right side, voltage drop on the left side. The difference in the voltage drop, that becomes the difference in potential between A and B, which we found out to be 10.6 volts. Then we short out the battery, remove the battery, put a simple wire there. We then draw the equivalent circuit to find the equivalent resistance of that circuit. That becomes the Thevenin resistance. We plug that into our equivalent Thevenin circuit, put on the low resistor, find the current by using symbol Ohm's law. And that's how we do that. And it's actually not that bad using Thevenin's theorem on the bridge circuit.